Well, Dale, we talk about diversity and we talk about our high diversity mix. This one, I think the guys, when they labeled it, they called this the max diversity mix. I like to call this the vacuum cleaner mix because what we do when we get in planting all these plots, everything that we vacuumed out of the drill at the end of planting each set of plots, we throw in one big bucket, we stir it up, and then we always plant it out at the end. So this plot that we're standing in here has 70 different things in it. And I, I would suspect that if we took the time and, and got down on our hands and knees, we could find all 70. Uh, maybe that'd be a good thing for the interns to do. It's a it'd project. be a good intern project. Yeah, properly identified. Yes. Uh, so, but but this is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, it, some of this stuff is four or five feet tall. But when you look down inside the canopy, I mean, we got short stuff growing down in here, oh, yeah. and it's just absolutely thick. There's not any sunlight hitting the ground. We're we're intercepting it all, kind of that that rainforest, you know, different uh, levels of plant growth and canopy. And it's just absolutely beautiful. The insects in here are, are phenomenal. Uh, we've got a lot of the plants that we saw in the pollinator mix are showing up here as well. But we've got a lot of other forage plants too, like, like a, is, that, is that a collard right there? Pull that huge leaf up. Yeah. Uh, and we've got huge leaves Collards. clear down underneath here that you can't even see. We've got the peas and the vetch that tend to vine up. We didn't see those peas vining when they were growing over there by themselves. Yep. But here, where they've got some taller things to climb, they're just climbing right up to the top. Yep, I, I found some of the snail medic that we looked at earlier. So, uh, there's all kinds of stuff here. So as a general rule, Dale, I would say that everything that I saw down there, I'm seeing here, but it's better. Why, why is it better here? Diversity. There is truly power in diversity. The worst competitor a corn plant can have is the corn Another plant corn next plant. to yeah. it. The worst competitor a sunflower can have is the sunflower plant next to it. If the neighbor is using a different area of the soil to extract water and nutrients, it's going to be less competitive than if it's an identical plant. Right. And, and so, um, You've got nitrogen fixing plants next to nitrogen using plants. We've got cap roots next to, to uh, fibrous roots. We've got tall plants next to flat leaf plants that, that can utilize that second layer. You just layer in roots and you layer in canopies and you have nitrogen fixers, nitrogen users, phosphorus uh, availability increasers, potassium availability increasers. They all work together in a community, and what we get here is something similar to probably what they found 150 years ago when they rode here in covered wagons. A, uh, you know, a prairie that's highly diverse, contains grasses, legumes, and forbs, and what we've done here, it didn't take 10,000 years to build it. This was accomplished in about 60 days. Right, and even, even plants like, like here's flax. We looked at flax earlier. It's not a huge plant. It's not super competitive. But yet, right in the midst of all of this right here, we've got these flax plants growing, and they're holding their own. And they're blooming, and they're setting some little seed pods here. So it's doing just fine uh, in conjunction and combination with all these other plants. Yeah, and, you know, I, uh, of course, I, I have uh, cattlemen's tunnel vision a lot of times. <laughs> I, I think about... And I'd like to turn cattle out here and, and, and eat all this. And they're not going to eat 100% of this. And that's okay. that's okay. Because you want some of this left over after the cattle leave to feed the soil and to protect the soil. And so, you know, I look at this, you know, I, I've, I've had to expand my vision from what can my cattle eat to what can my cattle eat plus what will feed my soil and make it better for next year's cattle pasture. Right. And, and this will generate more biomass than anything I've seen that we talked about earlier, but it also has more soil benefit. You get, you've got plants that produce high protein root exudates, plants that produce high energy root exudates, talked about the buckwheat that makes the phosphorus availability exudate, the, the vasilia with the potassium availability exudate. When you combine all those together, you get a vegetable soup that's very nutritious. And we found out that as impressive as, impressive as all this above ground biomass is, the root exudate
sedates are six to seven times more effective at building soil organic matter than above ground biomass. Yeah. So what you see happening below ground is seven times as impressive as what we see above. And just, and just think about how many different root exudates are being pumped into the soil here. And every one of those 70. <laughs> well, at least. And, and each one of those is going to benefit or host different types of biology. I mean, we don't fully understand this, but we know that in order to have diverse biology in the soil, we need to have diverse food sources. Right. And each one of these has a different exudate profile, if you will. And so, I, you know, and we're not saying that everybody needs to plant a 70-way mix. Uh, then this is kind of overkill. We wouldn't have done it. If we had it all vacuumed out, and there it was. But when we do a very diverse mix, we like to see, I think, a minimum of eight, and probably I would prefer ten or twelve, because we want to have all the different functional groups represented. Want we have, want to make sure I we have, have legumes. All the plant families. We yeah. want to have grasses. We want to have brassicas. We want to have broad leaves. Now this is all cool season stuff. If we were planting like now, or if we were planting in August. We could make this be a 120-way mix by adding in the warm season things too. And so, uh, you know, the diversity doesn't have, you don't have to have 70 things. We could mimic probably 90% of this diversity by having the right 12 things. Um, I, I just, <laughs> it's pretty. And there's there's ladybugs down here. There's been bumblebees, you know, buzzing us here. and Butterflies flying all over the place. Uh, it's just, you can just kind of just come set out here, okay? Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I like to tell people, uh, I can't tell you how many older farmers in, in their 70s or 80s who have come up and talked to me, you know, we, a lot of times we think of someone in their 70s and 80s being very set in their ways and unwilling to change or adopt new practices. The most enthusiastic people that I've talked to about cover crops are guys in their 70s and 80s who tell me that this has given them a new lease on life because they can see their soil improve each and every year. They love walking, just going out into something like this and looking at all the different plants and all the different insects. They, they, they just can't believe that how sterile their farms used to be and how alive they are now. Yeah. And it's just changed their entire outlook on life. It's made farming fun again.